Hi everybody. So as you might know, I am a studio concept salon owner and I actually have a stylist that works with me. It's technically a booth rent stylist. And seeing as I share space with another person, I like efficiency, um, I think that we work better when we can remove like friction from our routines and our spaces. So through that lens, uh, I created some opening and closing procedures. They're relatively simple, but the benefit I found to having these like simple procedures in place that I also shared with the stylist that I work with, so we have clear communication on that, it allows us to have smooth sailing mornings to open our salon and then allows us to like wrap everything up at night so that we're setting up the next day for success. So it helps with stress, it helps with productivity, and who doesn't love that? So let's jump on in to a few suggestions for opening and closing procedures. And before we go any further, if you are interested in more business content or if you're a hairstylist and like videos like this, go on and subscribe and like this video and then I will know to produce more content like this. All right, so first up with the opening procedures. They're fairly simple, right? You're coming into the salon space. I personally like to arrive at the studio 15 to 30 minutes before my first client. This allows me to uh, get acclimated in the space and be there and be present before I bring another client in um, to start the day. I just, I like to be grounded in the space before my day begins. So come into the space, I turn on the lights, we have a Keurig, so go on and turn on your coffee pot, get that water going, because um, that sometimes I feel like when you want to make someone a cup of coffee and you need to turn on your thinking Keurig, takes forever. So go on and put it in your opening procedures. So lights, Keurig, turn on like a wax pot if you do any type of facial waxing or body waxing. Get your music pairing. Go on, turn on like your Bluetooth speaker. Get your tunes going for the day. Um, we actually, when it comes to music in the space, we have edited music. We um, also have a variety of ages and personalities of clients. And we ourselves like a variety of music. So that's why having like Pandora be edited, having that setting on there is always a great idea. But traditionally in the mornings, we kind of start out with something, you know, slower, maybe country or lumineers or something like that, that is like kind of upbeat, but like lets you get in your morning. And then around two o'clock, we tend to switch it to like Wilson Phillips, Paul Abdul, 90s pop hits, something like that. So music plays a major part in your space's vibe and feeling. After we set the tone in the room with music, um, I actually then go on and turn on our oil diffuser. Now, even if you're not um, big into oils having healing powers or whatnot, the scent alone is very powerful. And all of us know that scent plays a major role in how we feel in a space. It can be exhilarating, it can be relaxing. And so that's why in our diffuser, we actually tend to use a couple different things. I actually really like doTERRA's lemon and wild orange. I will mix those equal parts in the diffuser or sometimes just wild orange. Uh, citrus is really uplifting, so especially in the beginning of the day, it's very nice um, to kind of have in the space and very nice to smell. It's a very good kind of scent. Um, sometimes if it's maybe a big, busier season, like around the holidays or something, I actually really love an essential oil called Chill Pill that you can get at Target and I'll link it uh, below for you. But Chill Pill is, it's like a mix of like frankincense and like a little more um, soothing eucalyptus-y scents, but it's a really nice one. It's a little more like spy and calm versus the uplifting of like the wild orange or the lemon. So yeah, setting the tone in the room with your music and even scent is amazing. Now on to closing procedures. So the funny thing with closing procedures is I almost thought about switching them because I'm a firm believer that your closing procedures, the way that you end the day and set up the next day is really your recipe for success. Like opening procedures is just to make sure you have like a little system in place that, you know, keeps you in line, but closing procedures is really where like you're helping yourself out for like tomorrow. So when it comes to closing procedures, we're turning stuff off, right? Mainly for like fire prevention, turn off your wax pot, make sure all of your tools are unplugged, things like that. Um, scrub and wipe down like shampoo sinks and um, any other 
um, like sinks you may have in your space, whether they're visible or not. It's kind of like when you're at home and they say like, you know, clean up the kitchen at the end of the night so you wake up to a clean kitchen. Kind of the same thing. Clean your space up so you're fresh in the morning. So yeah, so scrub and wipe out any shampoo sinks or regular sinks. Wipe off all counters. Um, as you know, in our industry, you get a lot of hair everywhere. You, you know, maybe there's a little color droplet here and maybe there's a little bit of coffee over there. Wipe off your surfaces. Um, this makes the space look better and is actually just clean. So that's always great. Um, leave all curtains and blinds open. Um, part of this is a pet peeve of mine. Part of it is uh, so that passersby, we have a space that is like on the storefront, right? So having the windows open, uh, potential clients could look in and see the space. And if you have blinds closed, it's clearly obstructed. Also, when you leave the blinds open in the evening, when you come into the space in the morning, to have the blinds like up and bright and open, it's just a really uplifting feeling to me. So you may not feel that way. If you agree with me, throw it down in the comments below. Let me know if, you, if you're picking up what I'm putting down about liking your space like nice and bright when you enter it. There's a chance I'm just eccentric. Uh, next, take out garbage and replace the bag if needed. Um, I feel like garbage is one of those sneaky things that we hate doing it. It's not actually hard. Um, and even in our uh, location where we put the trash, it's not like far. It's like right outside of kind of one of the back rooms. However, it's just an annoying job to do, but go on and do it and you'll be very happy you did because it's without fail, whenever you leave the garbage high at the end of the night, the next morning is when you have like a full foil and you're like, oh crap, I can't get anything in there. So go on, help tomorrow you, take out your garbage, Place the bag, you're welcome. And then uh, one of the last things I do before I leave is rotate laundry. The reason I like to do this at night is, you know, it makes you feel like you've got all the laundry done, even though we all know that whether it's at work or home, laundry is never done. But go on, throw laundry in the wash. If you've got laundry in the washing machine, go on and rotate that out. That way in the morning, you have a fresh load of laundry all, all ready to go for you. Um, a lot of times I do, when I go to like kind of shut down the salon and I'm done with my last client, I've checked them out, they're gone. And it's kind of like evening time to go. If I need to do laundry, I put the dirty laundry in first and then that load takes about 30 minutes. So I then do the rest of these, maybe touch base with clients that have left messages, check work email, refill certain things, take inventory, and then right before I leave, I rotate and put the laundry into the dryer. But keeping on top of your laundry on a, a daily basis is so helpful. And I honestly, it, at our location, we have to pay for laundry. And I know that you know, it can be kind of weird when you share laundry facilities with people, but I personally love to leave work at work. So when I come home, I can be home. So even though it's a paid laundry facility, I'm fine with it because that means everything for work is there and it's good to go. So those are my opening and closing procedures when it comes to the salon. Um, I think when you're developing your own, it's important to think about what will help you. Um, when you think about, you know, your, I think closing procedures, to be honest, are sometimes the most important because it allows you to kind of like shut down the day and then help future you out. So I would also recommend, and it doesn't necessarily be on your closing procedures, but as a practice, go on and set your card up for your next client. If it's a color client, if it's this, um, just go on and do that future prep so that when you come into the space in the morning and you're getting everything turned on, you're already ready to go. Because I firmly believe that when you kind of prepare for school the night before, um, you're just gonna have less like friction in the morning. Um, you're gonna have less like, oops, I forgot this. You're just gonna be more prepared. And when you can come into the salon and into your workspace feeling prepared and confident, it really sets you up for success on all accounts. So I hope some of this content helped you out. Um, if you already do anything like this, please let me know. If you've got any tips 
and little things that you pop into your personal opening and closing procedures, drop them in the comments down below. And like I said before, if you'd like to see more content like this, more businessy, more salon-y, go on and like, and like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I will see you next time. Have a good one, bye.